In case you have not figured it out yet, today we are going to be talking about the boxing system. And not unlike real boxing, there is in fact a system that one needs to follow in order to be successful. Systems help us do things in a consistent way so that we get consistent results. So everybody sees this diagram all over the place. You've seen it in textbooks and you see it online. What we're gonna to do today is we're gonna go over the whiteboard and we're gonna take apart that schematic. And we're gonna talk about the A and the B and half the B and the DBL and the distance between centers and the frame PD and the sag height and the sag drop. We're gonna cover all of those in individual pieces. And I'm gonna show you with some really nice stills and some whiteboard stuff just exactly what it is you're trying to measure when we're talking about all those letters and combinations of letters. So then you can turn around, get good measurements, pass those on to the lab, and just plain get better work back from them. Be careful. Millimeters are really tiny things. Learn how to read the PD stick. Practice it. Make sure you have it right. None of this matters if you're reading your PD stick the wrong way. Pay particularly close attention to how the numbering starts. If it's at the very end of the stick, then you can use it just like this. If it starts a little bit in, you need to compensate for that and allow for where that zero begins so that you're counting the right way. PD stick, learn how to use it, learn how to read it correctly. What I want you to pay attention to, and there's a reason why my lines are not absolutely perfect, is I want you to keep in mind at all times that we're boxing the lens size and shape as it sits within the frame. We are not boxing the frame. All right, I've got super frame in place. When you are dealing with customers and you're looking at them and you are sizing them up, is it a big person? Is it a little person? We're thinking about frame size in the boxing system. Normal frame sizing runs 5218, 4115, 4516, 6520. 6520 being a very large frame, big man's, big, you know, 1970s stuff. 4115, small, child's frame. Two other pieces that go into frame sizing are the B and the tempo, which we're gonna cover as well. Where does that first number come from? It is considered the frame I size or the frame A. It is, for frame sizing purposes, the longest horizontal measurement in the eye wire opening. A, this way. If you take your PD stick, you want to measure from the inside edge of the frame here to the inside edge of the frame here, horizontally, not like this, not like this, straight across for the longest one. That is not necessarily gonna be at half your B. It may not be here, it may be here. It could be anywhere on this lens, depending on how that pair of glasses is shaped. But I'm gonna take my PD stick, I'm gonna hold it right against that edge. I'm gonna look across and I'm going to read the longest opening horizontally within the eye wire. That's my A. My B is the longest vertical measurement that I can get. I'm not going to do this, 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 I'm gonna take my PD stick, I'm gonna hold it to the inside edge of my frame, and I'm gonna read down to the inside edge of the eye wire here. That does not necessarily always fall at the center of the eye wire opening. It could be over here. That's no good, that's no good. This is okay. I can't measure here. I can't measure here. I'm measuring the longest one that I can get. That's my B. The DBL is the distance between the lenses, and that is the closest point where the lenses come together. It is not at the bridge, necessarily. It is not at half your B, necessarily. It's not a convenient place where you can always rest your PD stick against the bridge and have a nice level place to work from. It's wherever 
you can picture, see that the two lenses that will fall inside this frame come together at the closest point. And that I can measure for frame sizing from my inside edge to the inside edge of my frame. That is my DBL. Or let me, let me do this another way. DBL, the distance between the lenses. Remember that we're always talking about the lenses within the frame, not the frame. If I had a frame that was shaped in such a way, I could have my lenses closest together within the frame eye wire opening right there at the bridge. Depending on my frame shape, I could have my lenses closest together at about half my B. In some crazy, funky, wild frame shape, maybe I could have it even below my B, who knows? But that's what you're trying to measure when you're doing DBL. You're trying to measure the distance between the lenses as they sit in the frame, the closest they sit together within the opening of the eye wire or the frame. That's DBL. The other thing that makes up a frame size is the temple length. So sometimes you'll see 45, 16, and then a B, 20, whatever it might be. And then a temple length usually runs between 125 and 150. 125 being a really pretty small child's frame, 150 being a really big guy frame. Usually they're right around 140. One other thing worth talking about when we are discussing the boxing system. If you have a fully rimless frame, obviously you're simply going to measure the lens edge to lens edge, lens edge to lens edge for the DBL. I tried capturing some pictures of fully rimless frames to make a point of it, but those are really hard to capture. If you have a thin metal eye wire, just measure the frame, you're gonna be fine. If you get into a plastic frame with all kinds of bling, something stuck here, something stuck here, real thick plastic, remember, it's the last time I'll mention it, you're measuring the lens within the frame. So you're not gonna be able to just steal the measurements from the edge to the edge. You're going to have to compensate and picture where that lens fits within the frame and measure from there to there. I've put together 20 still photos here, 20 plus, and I'll walk you through and talk you through so you see what I'm talking about. Please bear in mind that you may see something as 17 millimeters where I saw it as 16 and a half. We're human. What I want you to do is pay close attention to how I'm holding the PD stick. Notice how my thumb braces it so it doesn't move as I'm trying to read it. Notice where the zero begins. Very important. You can easily be off a couple of millimeters if you don't line up your PD stick the correct way. Notice how on a small, thin metal frame, it's not going to make a difference if you try to do edge to edge or outside to outside, unlike something like a plastic frame. In this series, what I want you to do is pay particular attention to the arrows. Notice the difference between the red arrows, which are measuring where the lens edge will eventually end up, versus the green arrows, which of course are the actual frame edge. Here we have a difference of a millimeter on each side. Obviously, if you need to pause these and look at them, go ahead. Here I'm measuring the A on a metal frame and get a beautiful 51 millimeters. Here is a B on a metal frame. Going edge to edge, I get 28 millimeters. Here I'm measuring the B on a plastic frame, frame edge to frame edge, and I get 26 millimeters. Make sure you're getting the same counts that I am. Here, I'm measuring where the edge of the lens will eventually fall within the eye wire. Here, I'm measuring the B on a metal frame, edge to edge, and this time I get 26 and a half millimeters. Obviously, the higher the prescription, the higher the power of the lens, the prescription that you're working with, the more important these measurements are going to be. Here, I'm measuring the A on the lens edge to lens edge, and I get 45.5 millimeters. Here I'm measuring the DBL on a plastic frame, lens edge to lens edge, and I get 16.5. Hopefully you're starting to get the idea here. Measuring the A on a plastic frame, edge to edge, a beautiful, crisp, clean 44 millimeters. And here are three examples of measuring the frame PD, which I'm gonna cover in just a few minutes. 
your frame PD is equal to your A added to your DBL. It is also equal to the geometric center of the eye wire openings. More of that in just a few minutes. Hopefully you get the idea, and I sure do hope that this series has helped you see where it is that you need to be measuring these frames. All right, we've covered A, we've covered B, we've covered DBL. Let's go ahead and look at some of those other measurements that are on the boxing system. One is the distance between centers. It means the distance between the center of this eye wire opening to the center of this one. It's used in finishing layout calculations because unless you box it, you don't have a reference point. It's just floating in space. There's nothing there. Rather than trying to measure the distance between here, we have fixed points that we can use instead. Your distance between centers is equal to your frame PD. Your frame PD is equal to your A and your DBL together. So if I measure from here to here and from here to here, I get the exact same number as here to here, but I have an actual reference point to work from. So when in doubt, if you need a frame PD or a distance between centers, use the frame itself or put your boxing grid together and measure from here to here. That's your distance between centers or your frame PD. Another piece, super, super important, believe it or not, is simply half your B. And that is just that. If I measure my B and I get a good reading, if I split that in half, from half my B, my progressive height is calculated. So my fitting, when I move a progressive lens up, if for blocking and finishing, I measure it from there. Segment drop, which I'm gonna show you in a couple of minutes, works from half the B. Very useful. Another piece of the boxing system. Now let's talk about the ED or the effective diameter. This is a part of the minimum blank size calculation. This seems to trip a lot of people up, so can I try to pay close attention here to what I'm saying and how we work this through. Technically, the ED or effective diameter is two times the longest possible radius that you can find within the eye wire opening. If I have this shape and I, I deliberately cut this side different than this one, the longest possible radius I can measure here is to this corner or to this corner. If I measure from here out because of my frame shape, it's a shorter radius. If I come down here, it's a shorter radius, shorter radius. If I come to this corner because of the way it's cut, it's a shorter radius. The longest I can find would be here. My ED would be two times that amount. So if this was 32, my ED would be 64. Then you can take it and plug it into the minimum blank size formula which I cover in detail on the Optician Works website. I would encourage you to look at that because it sure does seem to stump a lot of people. The last piece of the calculations or the figures that you see on the boxing system diagram have to do with seg height and seg drop. We're all familiar with using segment heights, fitting heights, labs, surfacing and finishing often use seg drop rather than seg height. And what that is, is the distance from the half B, remember I mentioned the importance of that before, to the top of the segment. Let's say you had a frame and you measured the B and you got 32. Half of the B then would be 16, 16, splitting it. If my segment height was 12, we measure our segment height from the lowest point of the frame to the top of the segment. You should be familiar with that. But if I were asked for seg drop, which you may be asked in a practical exam of some kind, if I have 16 from here to half my B and my height is 12, my seg drop is four. The top of my segment, the segment line is four millimeters below half my B. 
So that's where seg drop comes from. Practice, 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 time will tell. Make sure you're reading that PD stick right and you will get a handle on the boxing system. It is really, really important. Again, it's something that you're gonna use every day as a working optician. Super important, the boxing system. I will see you next week.